ultimate, but no ultimatum. Proverbials convey in my verbatim proof of praises. Oh, thank the sweet God. It is MMA Mondays. We're back. Football is over. So now you get to listen to us every week. There's no football games for you to watch. None of that <laughs> crap. <laughs> we are sponsored by ADK Fightwear, Black Hole Jiu-Jitsu, Madama Jiu-Jitsu, and Two Minute Morning Sports 360. I am your host, the Reverend Tommy D. Joined with me by my two bash brothers, El Professor, Omar Sangarima, and the hungover casual, Chris Gucci. What's up, yeah. guys? Day three, so I'm getting there, but... Am I Jose Canseco in this equation? Does yeah. that make me... I think so, right? you got to be Mark yeah. McGuire. Well, it would have to okay. be because, yeah, Chris is a pasty, freckly guy that looks like Mark McGuire, just and Omar 700 is pounds smaller. Exactly. And I took a dive in pride, is what you're saying? I like it. I'll, I'll accept that. Yes. I'll accept it. No, but Canseco's <laughs> a snitch. Yeah, I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, well. That's, oh, yeah. The that's one funny. Thing. The, the guy who turns clean goes to goes to pride and fights a, a nine-foot-tall Japanese guy. But that's neither here nor there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a big, big weekend for news again, and not good news. Max Holloway has now pulled out of his fight with Frankie Edgar. So now this is 0 for 2. It's starting to look like Khabib and Tony. That's what it's starting to look like. Um, a lot. But before we start talking about who Frankie's next fight could possibly be, I want to throw a little shade towards Max's way. And this was brought up to us by uh, our friend from Hawaii, Mike. The guy pulls out of a fight, and now he's trolling Connor on Twitter. Kind of stupid. Kind of stupid. He just pulled out of a fight. You're not going up to 155 unless you drop the belt. In order to drop the belt, you have to be healthy enough to fight. Connor would have to kill himself to make 45. Yeah. It's... I, I don't know. I like Max a lot. You know, we, we all like Max, but it's kind of weak. It's kind of weak sauce. Like, it's not coming back, and he's definitely not coming back for you. I, I don't think that would be like the, oh, my God, I can't wait to see this fight. I don't. Yeah. Omar, you hear our boy uh, caping up for Connor over here again? It's I, – I don't know – what to fucking say here? It's it's almost like this How's is that uh, bizarro, <laughs> bizarro Tuesday. That That's as close to keeping up as, as Tommy ever gets. So we'll take it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. You know, it's common sense. The guy won't come back for anybody. He hasn't defended a belt ever. And he's gonna come back for Max Holloway. Really? I would, but I'm a. I would. You know, that's a great fight, right? Like for the. If, people that don't matter, which are the people that are going to buy stuff, you know, no matter what, right? Allegedly, um, you know, buy it. That's neither here nor there. But who's, you know, the hardcores are going to watch that fight regardless. But that has no mainstream appeal. I hate to say it. Hawaii Mike might tell me to go fuck myself, but it's the truth. You know, Connor's not coming well, back. Well, he's kind of leaning towards exactly what we said. It's, it's kind of weak. Yeah. So. Now that that fight is off, uh, we were told through the Twitter that they were trying to set up the uh, Brian Ortega, Frankie Edgar fight. Well, was just sent to me by our buddy Sean Teed that Cody Garbrandt has agreed to fight Frankie at UFC 222. And Frankie on Instagram said he'll fight anybody. He doesn't care. Kind of interesting, don't you think, for Cody to jump up the weight class? So what do you think, Omar? When you, Omar? Say, when you oh, all right, I'll let Omar go first. No, please go ahead, Chris. No, no, you had. You I had, just have you a quick had. question yeah, ahead, to clarify Chris. because when you say when you say Cody agreed, does that mean that the UFC offered him the fight, or is he just saying like I'll do that, like throwing well, his hat out, naming the hat? He's basically guess, calling, you know, throwing his hat in the ring, but challenge accepted. Garbrandt answers the call to face Frankie Edgar in UFC 222 main event. Wow. This I mean, is on that's... MMA Imports. Now that's, you know. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, that's a hair above BJPenn.com. I'm thinking. Like, a hair. 
It's out there a little bit. But this would be this would be kind of a like a big fight because they're both represented by the same management company. So I could see this really being pushed to happen. Um, either way, I, I think it's a it's an intriguing fight against Cody. I think I think Frankie's wrestling would probably be pretty damn good. I know Cody was you know he's a, a really good wrestler, but I think Frankie would find a way around his boxing. What do you think, uh, Chris? Yeah, I think Cody would get would be in, in over his head there, man. Just the experience alone, Frankie's been. I don't know, you know. I feel like Frankie should be taking the Cody fight, or take is more dangerous. But I don't know that Frankie really gives a fuck, obviously. But I think Frankie definitely has what it takes, and I agree with the wrestling aspect of it. I just think, honestly, I think the footwork, the boxing, Cody's good, but, you know, he's got that hook. I mean, I don't really see much else other than, like, good in-the-pocket boxing. I don't see – I know you know what I'm talking about. I feel like Frankie's bat boxing is, is even light years ahead of Cody, as good as Cody's is. Well, it's Frankie's movement, able to get in and out yeah, it's as just, fast as he does. And he has and to slow mixing down. Up, changing the, he changes levels really well, and he mixes up like, the boxing with the takedown as good as anybody. And I think that's like a really – that's like fastball changeup in MMA is like boxing, wrestling. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. you're right. And th- – the thing with me with the Ortega fight, yeah, it's dangerous, but I would love to see those two on the ground. Of course, of course. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Ortega's a he's a killer on the ground, and and like he's very underrated. He has some momentum going. He, he, that would be a huge fight for him, and I feel like he's almost peaking at the right time right now. That would be a dangerous fight for Frankie, for sure. I would hate to see. I almost think Frankie should just be like, "Fuck this, I'm not fighting." But you know he's not going to do that. Yeah, no. No, because that's two training camps. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's two training camps back-to-back. You know, one he got hurt. Now this time Max gets hurt. And they haven't said what happened to Max, did they? They just said it's a leg injury. I mean, it could be a million different fucking things. Yeah. And, and I don't know that it's really – this is what surprises me. And I think that Frankie stepping up being a company man again – because I don't think Max is out for too long. I just think that he would have trouble making the weight with the leg injury that he has, and that's the reason for him pulling out. So I think that they would be able to reschedule this fight relatively soon, but it would, the card would be scrapped, essentially. It's too, you know, like they need Edgar on the card. So, But I just hate to see something bad happen where he loses his opportunity because it's just not been working out for him. Well... I mean, if it's Cody, he wouldn't lose any kind of opportunity, I don't think, because Cody's a 125-er. If it's, you know, Brian Ortega, yeah, that would probably pose a problem, but, I mean, if, let's say Frankie beat Max, he's going to have to fight Ortega anyway. Yeah, but my point, the point that I'm making is just the title shot. You know, if he loses to Cody, which I don't think would happen, but if he did, I would highly doubt that they're going to line Frankie up with him title shot coming off a loss to a guy that's coming up in weight. So now I want to pose this question. I want to pose this question to the two of you. I'm sure you're both going to have the same answer. Let's say this fight is in fact with Ortega. Do we see it for a interim belt at 145 because the champ is injured? No way. No way. Absolutely. As it, I don't want it to be, but it's gonna. No, it I, be, I agree be... with Chris. I agree with Chris. It shouldn't be. It's fucking ridiculous. They're giving these no. away like Cracker Jack toys. No. no. But who knows, man? Like then, then why don't they make every number one contender? They should just make an intercontinental championship. And it's make... about to happen. Chris Jericho is gonna sign and he's and gonna fight all CM Punk for the and make all number one contender fights for the intercontinental belt. Yeah. And then. You know, I don't know. It's just uh, it was just something that was making me. Are you going to start stripping like, number one contenders when they're when they're out for a while of their of their interim belts? It's so weird. Yeah, the that's, whole... like, that's just a weird thing, you know. But I was sitting there thinking when they were saying that that fight was going to happen. I'm like, we don't know how long Max is out for, 
right? He might not want to go through another training camp again. So he might want to take some time off. You know how the UFC is. All right, you're going to take some time off. We're going to make an interim belt because they don't want another Connor situation. Not saying that Max Holloway would do that. Yeah, I would imagine there's a lot of speculation there. I would imagine that Max is looking to get after it, just knowing the way he is. And like, yeah, but it looks like he's trying to get after it in another weight division. No, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Connor said something first. Well, there's another one. You know, don't talk shit if you're not going to fucking defend your belt. If you're just going to sit at home and be Mr. Cheeto Fingers. Are we are we the referring to the, same, to the same um, little barb that we saw, that I saw? It was like where Connor posted something about him, like, hitting Max and it was like when the ref isn't there to save you and then Max responded with a picture of the ref pulling Floyd off and then and just said when the ref is there to save you and so like I mean I don't really have much problem with either one I have but, a problem with it when you just pulled out of your fight though yeah I get That's it I, I kind get of it. have a problem with it so we'll, we'll see what unfolds either way if it's if it's Cody or uh, or Brian Ortega I'm actually yeah. excited to see that fight. So, Chris, you, you mentioned something about pulling the ref or the uh, the ref pulling the fighter off. <laughs> <laughs> or, or not. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about Valentina, shall we? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it, you know, all right, here's my thing with it. Should it have been stopped yeah, but should never have put an unranked fighter. Who I don't even think she had any fights in the UFC, did she, Omar? She, uh, I think she fought somebody in the bathroom on the way in. So she had, she was, she's one and all. I think she might have UFC. trained with somebody who was once trained with somebody who fought in the UFC, though. I think so. Oh, I had a barbecue with Dana White. Really? I think so. Holy shit, I don't think I've ever heard of that before in mixed martial arts. Holy <laughs> beanbags. How does she have that poor of a showing? Good I lord. Mean, is what do you mean poor of a showing? Is it starting to turn into like the WBO, like the World Boxing Organization, where you're going to start padding someone's stats to to make them relevant? I mean, she's the number one contender. Okay, she lost to Amanda Nunes, but... I think yeah, and at, at twenty five, I think she's fighter? a force. She's a force at, at at that new weight class. I feel. Well, I mean, she's number one contender. That's what they keep saying. Number one contender. <laughs> yeah. So she's the you intercontinental mean, title holder, according to yeah, Chris. she's the inter intercontinental champion of the <laughs> one twenty five. <laughs> oh Christ! I yeah, I mean, it's just like what? What is that? Like what the hell is that? I have another question about what what is that? What was <laughs> that dance? What the fuck was that? No, let's like, just yeah. No, she you know can't what? Dance. Any no, further mention of that display in the ring? Any the further mention of Valentina's dancing? Any further <laughs> mention? You know what's gonna happen, gentlemen. All right, because that is it's offensive. I mean, can we just can we just like all right, I agree with with Omar's sentiment, but it's wow. Jesus. Don't do none, you know what's crazy? None of that. Well, because she spent that's, time that's in South America, now. guys. That's what's crazy. That's her guys. She now. spent time in Peru. All right, she can. And like, like, is that like it looks like she took lessons and was, was like, just still. Better. But then bad. Like, what the fuck yeah. was that? That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, she she looks she looks like this the is aunt her that came to the wedding. Very white girl. Oh. Sorry, no, white, she can't. White. She's like uh, the aunt that came to the Spanish wedding, and tried to get down. You know what I'm saying? On like the groom side or some shit. And it's just like, whoa, well, oh, okay, wait a second. You know, you stay on that side of the dance floor and don't ever stand back up. It's terrible. But it's back horrible. to the like, sorry to go there, but back to the fight and the rest. Yeah, I mean, she beat the, the shit out of that girl. <laughs> yeah, the, the girl, the girl tore her ACL supposedly after the first, in the first round and said something in her corner. Her corner was like, shut the fuck up, you don't care. The girl was <laughs> like dying in there, and, and there was nobody there. Hit her to with save your her. groin. I don't care yeah. if your groin hurts. Hit her with the groin. The, the yeah, Greg see, Jackson, so, the right there. Yeah. Everybody's throwing, you know, throwing the blame on Mario Yamasaki, but shouldn't her corner be to blame? What, did, what was no. the, what was the striking? It was 
Two 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 twenty five. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. I, I don't even feel. I almost feel uncomfortable making jokes about it because it's like I don't. I don't, like, I don't at all. <laughs> no, you understand what I'm saying? Like when there's yeah, two willing participants that are equally trained, I don't mind watching people fight. But when it's not fair, it's simply like they both signed you know, a waiver. They can get in the fucking yeah, cage. That girl made like that girl made like six grand <laughs> after everything. She so she that. lost money when you factor in medical bills. That the UFC's like. Oh You're no! Not I'm sorry. Pay. I was wrong. It yeah. was two thirty to three. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, yo, I'm pretty sure it was worse than that. That's Unreal. like playing a UFC video game and Against playing Stephen it on two player when there's only one person yeah. playing. Against Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking couldn't blow into the thing four times to try to at least like throw a couple of jabs at you. It's horrible. All right. I mean, you what's that, that supposed to do for Valentina? What's that supposed to do other than Wow, congratulations. You beat the shit out of somebody who's not ranked and has beat the, no, let's, people let's call it what it is, Tommy. To you. Let's call it what it is, all right? And for the casual fans, you beat a fucking tomato can. All right? It's a tomato can. It's over. This is something that we used to get on, on people in our beloved pride for doing. It was still a little more entertaining. I didn't remember feeling as as guilty like Chris says. It was very eloquently put. Like I felt guilty watching this. But then at the same time, Mario, for fuck's sake, pull the ripcord, bro. Like, what exactly were you waiting for? Okay, he's a trained jujitsu black belt, I believe, isn't he? Doesn't he have schools and shit? Like, did he see yeah. anything? Did he see anything? Well, he missed, I know he missed the tap the first time. I know he missed the tap. He missed everything. I know that. All right, was he microdosing on LSD and he saw like a, a bunch of fucking multicolored butterflies instead of two people fighting in that ring? Because aside from that, there was no reason you shouldn't have stopped that fight at least like. Two minutes earlier than he did. For fuck's sake. Unless he had money on the fight. Like, and what I think her, her corner should have stopped it. If she didn't want to fight anymore, her corner should have stopped it. Tommy, I love you like a brother. Chris, I love you like a brother. I see either one of you catching that sort of beating in a sanctioned event where I can't fly in with a uh, high kick. I'm throwing a goddamn towel. Right? Well, and I don't care um, if you guys are mad at me. I'm, I'm fully... Your- I, I know that it's illegal. The... the the corner cannot stop a fight. If yeah, they yeah. actually state that in the rules, like prior to, like the don't give a shit. The ref can, the only, only the referee can stop the fight. They say that before all MMA matches, but I think that's a terrible rule because yeah. I mean I remember Nick Diaz threw the towel in the Josh Thompson Nate Diaz fight, and they like they were gonna fine him for it or some shit, but because the fight was basically ended already, as he threw the towel in, they didn't. Which is crazy though, like, like how could you know? I, I don't. I'm not even going to touch on it really, but that's just. We'll just say that that's fucking nuts that they don't allow the corner to throw in a towel. I mean, and I got to ask you guys this honestly: What did this fight do for Valentina? At all? She bruised the knuckles. <laughs> I don't want to say because I'll get bugged. Now nah, say it. You know, come on. It showed us how bad of a dancer she was. <laughs> Didn't you say I was going to buzz you, but I had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like, yeah, but it, what I'm Christ. getting with here is this uh, this Priscilla, I can't pronounce her last name, but what they could have did was just completely derailed her, completely zapped every bit of confidence out of her because she was not ready for that fight yet. She was not ready for a fighter like Valentina. That's how you completely fuck with a fighter's psyche. You know what I mean? You just threw her into the wolves. <laughs> you know, this is a girl who came off a pretty close decision against the champ at a division higher. You know what I mean, Omar? It's just a it's a terrible thing. This could really make her like a different have a different career after this type of beating. Um yeah. I'm never gonna not associate her with two twenty to three or two thirty exactly. to three, whatever the stat line was. You know, and I've had a busted ACL. We've all had injuries and shit, but like, not, thank God, not during an actual MMA event. Like, I couldn't imagine. I tore mine. I was able to hobble to the sidelines from a Muay Thai practice and call it a fucking day. Somebody wasn't she being paid out. to beat the shit out of me. She wanted oh, yeah. it. Yeah. She wanted it. Of course it she out. did. Jesus Lord. You know. And I, I can't just, say I, don't I blame it. her. 
I can't say I blame her for wanting out because she was getting bludgeoned. She was getting bludgeoned. That was yeah. There's a time the fighter has to be safe from themselves. Like you know, they quit, but they they have too much pride to actually quit. So they're just in there getting the shit beat out of them, and that's up to the coaches and and the the people in place that are trained to fucking notice those things. Which is why I have a problem with the coaches not being able to stop it. Not that they would have in this case, but nobody knows their fighters better than the coach or their corner, whoever the fuck is in their corner, whether it be a father or somebody that they should definitely be able to stop the fight. Absolutely. And Yamasaki should never fucking ref again. Cause it's not like it's once in a while. It's, this is a serious thing. It's, it's he's, he's putting people at risk. He's putting, he's yeah, and like, I would be, never be the guy to be like calling for somebody's job. I understand it. It's hard. It is hard, but, that doesn't mean that you're doing it. Like, it's a hard job, but people do fucking hard jobs. Playing quarterback is hard. People do it. When they fucking suck at it, they get benched. It's that simple, you know? Yeah, but then there's, there's always that argument. If he stops it, let's say he did stop it too, you know what I mean? If he let it keep going. And she turned around and hit Valentina with a fucking uppercut and won. Would you be bitching that he didn't stop I'm not the fight? even talking it, about it. Goes, I'm, that, I'm just saying. Me, like, yeah, that, I get it. I get that. that but, but I think that the common theme amongst, like, the way refs think, and it's like amongst uh, – I think that even Bobby Wambacher, our buddy, good buddy, talked about this, is that you err on the side of, like, safety. If you're going to if you're gonna make the error, you know what I mean, like, make sure nobody gets hurt in there. Like, it's much better to – you know, these fighters could all live and fight another day. They have – that to cling to if they lose, it's almost like something they could, you know, I wouldn't say an excuse, but it's like, look, you know, I think I could have done better. I think I had more in me, you know, gives you confidence going into the next one maybe. And it's just, it's not even so much of that. It was the missing the tap that was crazy to me. Like, what are you looking for? Well, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. happened. The, the best in the business is, you know, we've talked yeah, about I this before. Yeah, I understand. I understand. But like, uh, it was like, it was like a, a, like you should have been so intent on what was going on because she was getting beat so bad elsewhere that it was like this person's at risk the entire time. Like what, you know? It was a bad situation all around. All yeah. around. It was, it was a bad situation when the fight was signed. It was a bad situation. It should never have even been signed. It shouldn't have been talked about. Irresponsible. It was. It was 100%. pretty fucking irresponsible, yeah. 100%. Yeah. You don't do that, man. There's no need for it. And to Nobody be honest wins. with you, I could, I could care less who Valentina fights next now. That's mm. just me. I could care less now. CM Punk. It's Come interesting on. time for women's MMA because of this, the flux of the new division. It's like I wonder where everything is going to shake out. It's definitely not – nothing is really concrete to me yet. It doesn't feel real. Like, what was this, a Rocky Balboa situation? An an unranked fighter going in against, you know, the the top fighter in that division at that point? Did they they think that that was going to happen? I know the girls... They've been doing this often, though, haven't they? I mean, this isn't the first time. This is... Who was it just recently? Another women's fight where it was like, what the fuck are they doing? The one in Poland, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that was a boring fight. Yeah, but it was still fucking... It was still somebody against nobody. It wasn't an attempted murder, though. Like, that's a big difference. Yeah, no. I think this one's more egregious because I, I almost witnessed, you know, Nicolas Cage shooting somebody on 8mm film. Fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it Bad. was... It was it was unfortunate, you know. I hope it doesn't uh, I hope it doesn't derail that girl's career. But you know, beaten like that on national TV, it's probably. I the think that this woman's like next that. opponent is Gabby Garcia. Oh God, no. she's not old enough. Oh, oh Christ, she's getting a yeah. rising treatment. Oh my, yeah, yeah, she is. The Yakuza, the Yakuza is fucking setting it up right now. That's why Yamasaki let her die. Yamasaki was in on it. The the part half of them that's Japanese was like, I got this guy. Bro, I not this. to go off topic, but I watched the Ensign Inua Rogan podcast today. That bro, such an amazing. Which couple one? Hours. The one where he was talking about the Yakuza. That's why I brought that up because it came oh. up. <laughs> They were deep in prayer. Yeah, they're doing deep. like they're doing like uh, gangster fights in Japan now, or they've been. Oh, you, well, dude, that's that. Yeah, that's old. Long time ago. I know, I know. Yeah, but it, I'm just saying. That was that was right after the uh, 
the, the well, not, not even right it. after because right after the the nuclear plant uh, blew up, he had Ensign Inoue and Chuck Liddell on together. That was you're right. talking like episode three hundred. No, of, this uh, is the one where the this podcast. was like right after. I mean, yeah, it was like right after yeah, the was, UFC went time. back to Japan. Right after the yeah, UFC went back I, to Japan. Yeah, the first I know time. what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, let's spin off onto the main event. Lyoto Machida against Eric Anders. And, I mean, I was pretty surprised Lyoto Machida put the uh, the blemish on Anders' record. Can we now solidify Lyoto as the uh, the gatekeeper? Like, is that signed, sealed, and delivered? He's now the gatekeeper? Yeah. No, because it would mean something when somebody gets past him. I'm, I think he's still not even... Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's valid. I mean, we got to give him the... When you say gatekeeper, it's just a good barometer of like, okay, this guy is the name that you could put side a gate. young guy. It's somebody to build his star off of. You know what I mean? Like if Anders would have come all the way with his win, more people would have known who he was, being that he beat a guy named Leonardo Machida. That said, I don't think it's as big of a win as like, obviously it's nothing compared to what it used to be. It's just a name yeah, for a young well, fighter I mean, to, to hopefully... Some Anders had some hype coming in with this one, you know, just like we yeah. said, undefeated fighter, going up hype, against man. the, the grizzly. Hype is man. hype, though, right? And it's not even like fucking he still isn't good. I mean, Machida's tricky any day of the week. Carol is still a tough fight, but I mean, it was a good fight. It was definitely a good fight. It, it went to a split decision. It was closer than uh, than I thought it was going to be, but you know. I still enjoyed it. I mean, for a Fox fight night, whatever the hell it was, it was okay. You know, it wasn't a uh, a barn burner. It wasn't on a lot of people's radars, but it, it was, was what it was something. supposed. To, it was what it was supposed to be. It was just like they put nothing into that card, and it delivered. You know, subpar card to me, but it was fights I watched. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess this is kind of the. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. You know, I didn't hear about the card until fucking two days before it, which is usually the case with those yeah. cards. Yeah. Yeah, I I get it from uh, UFC Unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. When they start doing they're their putting, picks, they're putting together a trash card for Atlantic City. Yeah. Soon. They're tanking on purpose. Yeah. Probably. Just because people want to fight in Jersey. You know, it's been a while since they were at the Prudential Center, and I don't think I could ever go watch a fight there. No, thank you. I was not a fan of the Prudential Center. I was there uh, the other weekend. No, thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did a monster rally, right? How was yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I had panic attacks the entire time because I'm definitely afraid of heights and how steep yeah, fucking like the Prudential up. Center is. Yeah. It was That was not good. Oh, no. Not good Fuck, at all. I didn't even think of that. Jesus, Lord. Oh, I was getting terrible. vertigo every five minutes. Every time I would just start to relax, I'd get vertigo. And then my son would lean over, and I'd start flipping the fuck out. God damn it. So I, 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 I meant to hit you up. Right there. And I'm glad I didn't. You're telling me your son would probably kick your ass because you're, you're acting like a little pussy. He wasn't. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I saw him like actually it. kick your ass like the next day. I, I wasn't really paying yeah. attention to the thread, but or the... But didn't he kick your? Didn't he kick you in the nuts? He said. Yeah, I taught. No, I, I taught him the. Uh, I taught him the calf kick, and uh, that kind of bit me in the ass because the last yeah. one that he kicked me with definitely fucking left a bruise. Yeah, <laughs> no, that'll happen. That's okay. Which goes though. to show you, which goes to show you how deadly of a move that really fucking is, because if you're getting kicked by like a Barbosa in the calf, imagine, you know, oof. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way: that two-minute video. Was more entertaining than Valentina's fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. That's. Uh, I, I wish we had like yeah. tubas. Wah, wah, wah. Like I, we need a mm-hmm. player wah, 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 on, wah, the, wah, wah. on the fucking well, soundboard. Guys, Poor lady. And, uh, all our listeners out here, we actually have a surprise guest tonight. My coach. 
as Matt calls him, as Matt Sarah calls him, Jedi Josh Madama. We're going to be giving him a call. He wants to come on. He wants to talk about the school. He wants to talk about Matt Sarah coming to the school. He wants to talk about former guest, friend of the show, my teammate, Mike, Sh- Mike L. shammy has got a fight coming up in March. So, Omar, let's give Josh a call. So, Chris. Hey, Tommy. Yeah, there you go. I was just going to say, <laughs> so what's up? What we got? I, I'm very intrigued with this uh Frankie Edgar thing, like it's still sitting on the back of my head. Like, who yeah, are they going to give it? Frankie, him? just you know, I wanted to get a shot. As much as I hate on Frankie with you guys, you know, definitely is more than deserving. I, I don't want to see it go down like that. But either one of those fights is going to be exciting. All three of those fights will be exciting. <laughs> yeah, you know okay. what I mean. All three Did of them. Did you hear what Nate? Did you hear Nate saying he was going to try and? <laughs> Nate was posting some shit about trying to save the card, the whole main event. I believe that one. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Was he drunk again? Probably. Yeah. Was, was he, he drunk? Got, like, yeah. His, he, he was probably shit faced again. He'll save the card. And how many he years playing? he's been? He's been in the UFC. A, a fight with Frankie that's never even come up. Think about no, that. No, he wasn't saying. I don't think he would fight Frankie. I've actually heard Nate go on to say he wouldn't fight Frankie because of the whole Gracie. But I don't know if that still stands. That's, that was a long time ago. Frankie was still I think lightweight. he respects him too much. Frankie was still lightweight, and he was the champ. And Nate was like, I don't even give a fuck about the belt. He's a, he's a Gracie fighter. I'm not, you know, he's like, that's basically like a teammate. <laughs> and that was when they were crazy about that shit. But he'll talk shit to Eddie Alvarez on Twitter. Yeah, well, I think Eddie Alvarez is a different, you know, Frankie's been been with Henzo forever. I don't think Alvarez has been, correct me if I'm wrong. There's this stuff going back and forth. Eddie wants to get paid, man, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him. He wants to get paid. I'm not hating on, yo, bro, I don't, you know me, man, talk that shit. I'm not hating on anybody trying to get that money. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have my coach, Matt Sarah Black Belt, Jedi Josh Madama on the line. What's up, Josh? <laughs> That's amazing. How's it going, boys? Doing oh, well. man. Thank you for finally, <laughs> finally coming on this show after a year. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. I know. I can't even come up with a good excuse for not. But I'm here now, and we have plenty to talk about. Let's let's get to it, man. What are you guys up to? Oh, well, we just got done talking about uh, this past weekend's atrocious fight with uh, Valentina and uh, what the hell was this girl's name? Priscilla, where the fight should have been stopped after about 13 seconds in. Did you did you well, catch shit. that at all? <laughs> so this this call's already off to a bad start. I didn't get to see any of it, man. I have no idea what it, what happened. You didn't miss about. much. You didn't. Well, <laughs> here's all to tell you. You ready for this? The fight only went mm. two rounds. Actually, a round and a minute and a half. Right. Valentina had 230 total strikes. Priscilla had three. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. How long did it last? One round. One full round, One round and a minute something yeah. into the second round. And Valentina had 230 total strikes. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, that's insane. That, that's and pretty bad. Stopped. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. That's insane. Yep, Mary that's Yamasaki insane. I can't missed. even imagine. No. I can't imagine no, throwing never. that many strikes in that short amount of time. That's nuts. All right, well, so. the worst part about this is is Valentina's number one ranked fighter, and this girl wasn't even itching mm. a top ten ranking. Like she was just okay. a name they picked out of a hat. Huh. That's interesting. I guess you know it's, it's. I don't even know. I couldn't even say. Like it's not like the division's that young anymore. There's got to be people. You know who knows. Who knows, man? Yeah. I wish I saw it now. I'm going to watch it. I'll tell you what. I'm going to check it out <laughs> and hang up. For sure. Just as soon as I'm done playing Fallout. I have a habit, boys, of waiting until something is completely out of style and then getting into it. So I'm playing Fallout 4. How far behind am I with that? So like two years? Two years? That never goes out of style. That's such a good game. So <laughs> anybody says shit, yeah. I got you. No, get out of here. Yo. <laughs> Beautiful. Um 
Yeah, so I can't help you with the fights, man. I haven't been watching. Tommy, I told you before, man, I, I'm out of the loop, man. Like I've been... You're not missing much, Josh. I'm telling you, you're, <laughs> you're not missing much. The UFC's numbers are abysmal. abysmal. Oh, is that right? Well, Nobody's well, listen, watching. I... Uh-oh. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what people should watch. You want to know what that is? What's that? They should get tickets. They should get tickets <laughs> and come to Tropicana on March 2nd to see the return of Mike Shan. He said, like, fresh off a quick submission victory at Rise Invitational 3, by the way. Um, first time competing in sport in a long time. And uh, he actually had a match against, oh, man, I want to say. Chris Cope. Chris, Chris Cope, thank you. Yeah, UFC veteran, a really, really tough guy. And uh, Shan yeah, really did well. Chris man. Cope can't beat. He can't beat Sarah BJJ guys. He couldn't beat Eddie. He couldn't beat Aljamain. Oh, that's, oh, that's <laughs> right. I forgot about all those. Yeah. But nevertheless, the dude's a good dude. And, and he's a veteran. And so it was really good to have Shammy get back into that and do well. Dude, you guys should see him. He looks amazing right now. He's changed his diet. He's, we got a new kid. Oh, man. Um, we got a new kid that's been helping him out, too. He's getting good sparring. Uh, man, th- he's looking great. So, March 2nd at the Trop, man. Really, really good fight against uh, Duke Rose. Uh, man, I'm going to mess his name up. His last name is Sneed. I know that, and he's a tough dude. But, uh, yeah, come check that out. That's going to be a good time for sure. You got another one of our uh, our uh, our veteran guests on here. I think that's Brad DeSeer's fight, isn't it, uh, Omar? Oh, March yeah. He's, uh, he's trying to look for to, to get back on the horse in 2018 if he finds his mouth guard. Again, it's been an odyssey. He lost his mouth guard the other day. And it's been it's been a situation. Oh, no. His teammates are making fun of him, calling him a, a big puss. Well, but, hey, Josh, I mean, here's a crazy here, here's a crazy story about how this <laughs> MMA fight game is nuts. The Brad Desir, who okay. we were just talking about, he fought yeah. for he fought for Bellator. Their first fight in okay. uh, New York City, knocked this guy out. They didn't invite him back. Uh-huh. Yeah, really? Huh. Yeah. One fight, and that was it. I don't know. <laughs> Did. I don't know. Did he not sell enough tickets? I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> Something. It's I don't know. I don't know. No, all, but honestly, he's a guys, New York guy. all kidding aside, man, all kidding aside, there are so many, so many talented fighters in the tri state area. It's crazy how many good people there are around here. And the average person doesn't even know. Like, Tom's River alone and Britt, there's just crazy amounts of good dudes. It's like, there's so many good guys. It really doesn't surprise me that, you know, it's like, okay, that guy knocked this dude out, and <laughs> it's like, what what, what, more does it take, you know? You just keep plugging away, and you start to get better fights, and hopefully, you you know, you make it to a big show. You know, that's what these guys really need to be able to do is just to get, you know, it's not just so much about how good you are. Like, all right, let's take Frankie Yeager, for instance, right? Frankie Yeager, obviously, one of the greatest fighters of all time, clearly tried out for the ultimate fighter house and they didn't take him. <laughs> it's like, dude, yeah, they said he's I don't too know small. why, you know, they said he was uh, too I don't small know for, for lightweight. You know, this, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, there was hearsay about this or that. Why? But nevertheless, they didn't take him. and fast forward and look, look at the amazing things that guy's done, you know? So it's, there's a lot of talent and, uh, yeah, we were and talking it's very about competitive and it's, it's really we hard to, about him to, to came make on it. Too. Yeah, we were oh, talking dude. about him before you came on, too, because Max pulled out. He's hurt. So he's yeah. out of the, the UFC 222 fight. It, they were setting it up for Brian Ortega against Frankie. But according to to articles that were just given to me by uh, by Sean I, Keen, <laughs> Co- Cody Garbrandt dude, wants to fight. I just read that, and um, I was <laughs> like, oh, that's going to be freaking awesome, man. And uh, I, I re- honestly, like, I'm more intrigued by that fight than than the Holloway one. To be honest, I mean, it's obviously like, dude, we'd rather see him fight the Holloway fight, but what do you do? You know, you, you you get lemons, you make lemonade. So now it's like, okay, why not? As a fan, that's a great fight, man. That's a fun fight, you know. And and uh, you know, Garbrandt's obviously looking to get back. Frankie's on a tear. He's been on a tear. The guy's getting better with age. So um, I I can't wait to see that fight, man. If, if that if they pull off getting that one to happen, I'm happy. As a fan, I'm going to watch. You know, isn't it amazing how he hasn't slowed down ever since he started working with Ricardo? When he was with um, oh my God, 
they opened up right in front of us for a very short time. Um, ah, that's okay, man. You know, dude, I got a great story about this anyway. But so I keep it was uh, Team Rhino, and you know, listen, man, back yes, then, yeah, Rhino, that's it. There was there weren't a lot of schools, man. You know, like actually, dude, I, I now listen, I may be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that way back, like way way back, I was just turning into my garage for a little bit. And uh, there was a wrestler that I used to work with a little bit. He was John. And he's like, hey, man, this dude's coming back from college, and he's looking at, he wants to fight in the UFC, and he's looking to train jiu-jitsu, and he lives in Tom's River. And um, I'm, not, I'm almost positive it was Frankie. And I talked to him on the phone. And I'm, in talking to him, I realized, I'm like, you know what? This dude sounds really serious, and I, I can't give him what he's looking for right now. What am I, like, Peter, I'm a purple belt. And I'm literally training once a week in my garage. And I, I told him what I thought was honestly best for him at the time, and uh, which was that I, he should go find somebody better who's more geared towards doing that at that point in time. And uh, fast forward, it's like, wow, man, maybe I should have trained him in my garage for a little bit. But in, in reality, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's, uh, you know, like when you talk to somebody and your job really is in life to try to help other people. Yeah. I'm going to take some dude into my garage. who's telling me he wants to fight UFC. And I'm training once a week. That doesn't make any sense. So he ended up going where he had to go. He found Rhino. And, and back then there weren't a lot of schools, you know, and, and they did a good job. You know, from what I can remember, like that's, we're talking like 10, 15 years back and my memory's not so good. I get strangled a lot and I haven't, I haven't always lived that well. So <laughs> I forget things, but, um, but the thing is, man, like, look what he's done, you know? That's just, like, it, it's – not everybody can do that. Not everybody – he represents a, the top half a percent of human beings in general, you know? But what does that mean for the rest of us, you know? It's like, okay, how do I get to be the best that I can be now? Like, what's the best – like, you look at – this is what clear intent gets you. And, and the guy has had clear intent from the day he was born, you know? So, like, it's like okay, he, he figured it out. And you go from a dude who's looking to train in a garage to now a guy who has done it all. He's seen it all. It's, it's amazing. But to do that, man, I don't think regular people understand how hard it is. These guys that are fighting, no. that, are, that, no. are, that are knocking somebody out on the big show, on the big stage, and not even get a call back – how frustrating that is, you know, like, or like, dude, I'd rather to change topic completely and talk about Shandy. Like, man, Shandy was really doing well. And, you know, the title fight that he had at Atlanta Combat, he was winning that fight, man. I don't care what anybody says. You go back and watch the footage, he was dominating I that it. fight in all areas. It. And, you know, now to his credit, his opponent was very, very, very good at fighting off the cage. He displayed it in both fights. They fought twice. And, in a split second, things change. And so we go from Shammy, you know, who's a few minutes away from being ring of combat champ and being looked at for UFC, to now we're basically starting over, you know. And, it, and it's like, wow, you see how long it takes to get somewhere. And then one thing goes wrong. And there are thousands of these guys, dude, just in this area alone, who are working their ass off. They train hard. They train smart. They do everything right. And... There's just only so much room at the top, man, and and it's tough, you know. So it's it's really interesting to see, and it takes something special for those guys to be able to do that. I don't have that, by the way. I have I have something else uh, entirely. I I, I could have I, I I'm not a guy who could say, oh well, if I didn't get hurt six thousand times, which I did, by the way, um, I could have done this or that. And you you figure out like really what you're supposed to be in life and sooner or later, hopefully anyway, for me, it took me way too long. You know, I was like 44 years old and now I'm finally very clear and able to move forward with, with focus and intent to do what I want to do. Imagine how I figured that out at 20, you know, but, um, didn't matter. Right boys. You know, so. Well, now you, you so started anyway, talking about feel, that. Let's, let's yeah, take I, us, I went all over the place. Take Holy us back. shit. No, it, that's great. <laughs> yeah. this, this is our show, Josh. Trust no, me. we love that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Take us yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, no worries. To when you first, okay, I want to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Because we, we know the lineage. Omar okay, wants to so, hear it. <laughs> yes. 
So this Absolutely. is going to take a really long time because they have a name. It, it, I'm going to sound like like a person who's like a Jim Hopper guy, and so I'm going to I'm going to have to like I don't want to dismiss anybody I've ever trained with because they're all important. And so, if I'm being honest, the very first martial art experience I had was at Geyser Fitness in Beachwood, uh, Beachwood, which no one knows what that is unless you're old. And the owner of that place was a really good man, really nice guy, and he taught Kenpo Jiu-Jitsu. And this was at a time where I was maybe 18, 19, and I lifted weights a lot, and I tried to be big and strong. To me, I, I didn't understand, first off, that if you learned how to wrestle, you can fight, right? Like, if I knew that, I would have wrestled in school, you know? Um, yeah. If you... Yeah, I was like these things. So I didn't know any of that. I just knew that I was uh, going into police work. I grew up in an area where I got into a lot of fights as a kid, most of the time um, with more than one person, unfortunately. And, and it was difficult, you know. So I come up and it's like, okay, I need to get big and strong and learn how to fight because the world's a dangerous place and people are going to try to hurt me. So you do that, and then you realize, like, okay, this particular thing is awesome until you get invited to go watch the UFC for the first time at your friend's house. And you say, what's the UFC? It's crazy. It's this thing, these guys, it's not like boxing. Like, they're in a cage, and they just fight. I'm like, really? That sounds fun. Let's do it. So you go, you drink some beers, and you watch. And I, I, this was probably, I want to say this, I know for a fact now, this was UFC 3. Uh, that was Shamrock Gracie number 2, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, yep. and so I see naturally being the stupid 20-year-old, uh, you know, juiced-up meathead that I was at the time, oh, man, this is, I want to be like this guy right here, Ken Shamrock. Of course, he looks he's like a physical specimen. He's going to kill this dude. And, uh, you know, sure enough, 30 minutes into it, he hasn't done anything. Horse is like, 30 minutes not, minutes not a problem. Fun. You know, so it wasn't <laughs> exactly the most impressive performance because I don't believe there was even a finish or anything. It was kind of a boring fight. But I think it was a draw, right? It was a draw, yeah. yeah. But think about that for a minute. You have this physical beast of a human being, like, very, very athletic, powerful man with good wrestling, good submissions, and, you know, at the time, good submissions. Uh, at the time, probably one of the most evolved leg lock games at the time, believe it or not. Um, I, I don't know what he's doing now with it, but, but, but back then, he actually finished he goes the to, with the Achilles box. He goes to the Army. <laughs> he goes around to the yeah. Army to uh, do leg lock seminars. Okay. Yeah, good for him, man. Um, but the point is, you know, you look at that fight, and you, don't, you think he's going to kill Horace Gracie if you don't know any better. And so after the whole thing, it's a draw. There's not a scratch on the man. He's 150 pounds at best, and there's no scratch on him. And so to me, I'm like, wow, I, I want to learn how to do that too, you know. And, and so from there, it's okay. I find a school, in, 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 and I'm going to plug another school. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm plugging a school in a neighboring town, but it's where I got my start with jiu-jitsu. And, uh, and it's called Tom Dragon Martial Arts. They're still there. So I go there. Really? And, and I oh, say, shit. I want to learn how to fight like these guys are doing in the UFC. Because back then, there weren't MMA gyms, man. There was karate schools. And uh, at least by me, it, like I didn't investigate fully to find out exactly what was around. But I can tell you, there wasn't a lot of jujitsu. You know, they're just, I didn't even know what it was until that. You know? So I find him, and he's got... And it's him and actually James Wellington are partners at this point in time. They have Muay Thai kickboxing, which, which they're both very good at, and they have what they're calling submission grappling, which they were learning from Craig Kukop, who was teaching for a very short amount of time with Henzo up north. And he ended up leaving and all these other things. But nevertheless, I started training that. And to his credit, to, to Eric Horn's credit, he's the owner of the school, I started saying, like, man, I want to do more and more of this. I just I want to focus on jiu-jitsu. I knew right out of the gate that I would do Muay Thai because I understood its value. And to watch it, it's awesome. I, I love it. But I don't love it for me to train full-time um, because I'm a limited human being. I, I'm a limited athletic ability, limited intelligence. I can only handle so much. So I knew that 
most of my effort was going to have to be put into jiu-jitsu. And so Eric told me, he's like, look, man, there's this guy, Henzo Gracie, who's teaching up in Middletown at the gym, at the Gold's Gym in Middletown, New Jersey. And I think it would be really good if you actually went up there and took some classes too. So that was my introduction to Henzo, was actually Eric Talone being a good enough guy to say, man, if you want more than this, you should go get it and go get it up there. And so I owe, I owe that to him, man. The guy's still there. He went to great school. He just expanded to doing good things. And so um, I, I always have to be very thankful to him for that. So that's really where I got my start with Jiu-Jitsu was Tom Dragon, Basil. And then I moved on to find Henzo, and, and we can go from there. But did you want to stop me there and talk a little bit before I move on? Because I could talk about this shit for like six hours. I didn't know <laughs> that you trained at Tom Dragon. You didn't tell I me did. that with my first tournament. <laughs> I did or didn't? You didn't, didn't tell me that. No. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's just, it's crazy, man, because it's just, it's literally another lifetime ago. It's literally more than half of my, it's, it's just over half of my lifetime ago, which is insane uh, because that happened quick. So, uh, boys and girls, man, make the best use of your time you can and try to live as happy and, and uh, peaceful of a life as you can while you're young because if you wait, you're going to be sorry. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, yeah, so Tongue Dragon, man, that was the start. And uh, luckily, luckily, er, you know, led me to Henzo, which, man, how do you do poorly if you find Henzo in your life and you keep him yeah. in your life? <laughs> I don't know anybody that's had Henzo stay in their life that hasn't done amazingly because of it, you know, like in addition to it. Like, look, man, Henzo, forget about all the amazing things he's done. Just simply the fact that I have Matt Sarah in my life because of my relationship with Henzo. I got to learn from Ricardo Almeida for years, um, who's amazing. The guy's fantastic. And like, to his credit, in a time where nobody in jiu-jitsu wanted to say we should be looking at what the you know, traditional martial arts schools are doing in this country as a model for how we should behave and how we should handle our students and how we should handle our business so it's sustainable. And he, I remember thinking back now, and I wish I was mature enough at the time to really understand what it meant, but being mutually beneficial – and not just for the student and the teacher, but for everybody involved. And so he went through a lot of growing pains early on, um, changing that and making it something where it's like the rest of the jiu-jitsu schools start to look and say, oh, wait a second. It's not so funny making fun of that stuff anymore. Kids' birthday parties aren't, aren't hilarious anymore. You know, like, <laughs> and uh, so he, he paved the way for a lot of us through pain through hard, painful change, because it was, I'm sure, I, I know because I'm doing it now, um, led the way for a lot of us to be able to do way better than we ever could have imagined. I mean, dude, I get, I'm an average human being. I get to do jujitsu for a living. It's insane. It really is insane. And, and really all it takes is the fact that, like, I knew to keep going and keep trying and um, and just simply wanting to do it in a way that, a lot of people can benefit from it, which is really what I'm focusing on much, much more now. In in past, it was always about technique. It was like there was a lot of pressure on me because, like, uh, you know, I didn't fight in the UFC. I don't have a stellar competition record. I don't, I don't like competition. I competed when I did at first because I wanted to try it and I wanted to win. And the amount of time I spent competing, I realized I don't really – enjoy competition I wanted to win and like everybody wants to win of course but if you don't really enjoy competition and you just want to win how good of an experience can that be right (laughs) it's like it's not that much fun you just start to realize like okay cool I don't have to be all that I have to be an amazing technician because why are people going to come to me otherwise like if I'm not famous they're not going to be able to put a famous guy's shirt on their back. And, and to, why would they bother to invest in me? I have to be amazing at technique. That's what I told myself. So regardless of whether or not I was hurt, regardless of whether or not I was sick, tired, whatever the case may have been, 
I got in my car and I drove to the, to the city. I got in my car, I drove to Ricardo's. And then, you know, when I finally found where I really, really, really fit in well and, and everything was, man, Matt Sarah's, it's, it's not close. It's all the way out on Long Island. It's three hours on a good day, you know, each way. And, um, you know, so, so back to this whole thing of lineage, I was fortunate enough to have a guy tell me, you should go see Henzo. And from yeah. there, man, look what happened. An average guy, I, dude, I get to be a great human being just simply because I knew enough to keep trying and to have the support of amazing people. You know, like if you have Henzo Gracie and Matt Sarah in your corner, what else do you need? Like, how do you, how can I, you can't even let yourself fail at that point, man. You better make it one way or another. The thing is, just you find out, okay, which thing is it that I'm going to be able to be the best at? I'm going to be the best at teaching jujitsu to people in a way that it can benefit pretty much anybody, you know, like not just a pro fighter who's the same body type as me, not yeah. just, you know, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, the road's an amazing one, like you were saying earlier. And, uh, and it started back at Time Dragon. I find Henzo. I go into Henzo's gym. The first time I go in, and again, it's uh, it's the Gold's gym. It's there's mats, there's wrestling mats in a in a volleyball court, basically, you know. And um, you know, my first experience there was with Craig Kukoc. He was out of there within a couple of months, and then and then I meet Henzo at a good friend of mine's house, who I met taking class with Craig. So I'm I go there. My first day go, I go there, right? And I walk in, and it's like time stops. And, like, everybody stops what they're doing, and they're just looking at you like they're going to kill you. It's like, oh, shit, man, this is a serious one. Good old days. (laughs) So I'm going to be, yeah, dude, like, I guess, it's funny. Gene Dunn, who's another Hensel Crazy black belt, who's an amazing uh, martial artist, just put up some video not too long ago and, uh, you know, talking about how we looked at it as the golden ages, and for many reasons it was, but he's like, it was also the fucking dark ages, which is also, like, it was... Dude, it was scary. And, it was brutal. Uh, it scared it was brutal. Now it's like a business. Then it was like yeah. getting choked yeah. out of his gym. So, was, you know. so, <laughs> any, so anyway, so my first experience was going into Craig's room. Craig was a really good technician for that time. I, it's always hard for me to think back 20 years and think, like, that skill set then, is that amazing compared to now? And the answer should always be no because – you can't stop, you can't halt progress, you know? So yeah. in that time, he was very good. He was a very stoic man. He was, he, he was, you know, there wasn't a smile on his face usually. I don't remember seeing one. Everything was very, very cut and dry. So that was my, you know, introduction to the, to the crew up at, up at that, at that gym in, in, uh, in Homedown or uh, Middletown. Um, but while he was there, I met some guys, and, and I met one of my dearest friends. His name's Chuck Bradshaw. He t- actually just put a book out last year. He's, he's awesome. This guy's got a great story, too. Everybody who I've met through Henzo somehow has awesome stories. The, the Chuck was, like, the only pagan to ever get out of being an outlaw biker and become a police officer, and, and he's just got great stories. But uh, long story short, lucky for me, he liked me. And so it was easy to keep going back because Chuck liked me. So, that's a big, well, that's yeah. a big, big, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So here's the thing. Like, at that point in time, he was already a little bit older. He was in his early 40s, but he was big. He was jacked. He had abs. I'm like, shit, man, I want to be like that in my 40s. So luckily, I have this guy. And he's basically like my big brother, you know, and, and invites me. I start training with him in his, um, in his uh, he had like a, like a big shed he converted to a gym and he had heat in there and mats and everything. And so like, that's I come like, there. That's the good old days right there. Dude, this is the this is the good old days, man. Because, like, look, man, I don't know if people now would really understand how amazing it is to be in your friend's shed gym and in walks, Hen- and in walks Henzo Gracie, right? And that's this and, Chuck's like, oh, Enzo, and the other guy. And, and I, sadly, and I feel bad, I can't remember all the other guys that were there, but uh, but they were important too. <laughs> but but listen, <laughs> um, Hanzo comes in, 
Big Chuck, my friend, how are you? Says hello to the other guys. And then Chuck's like, hey, man, this is my friend Josh. And oh, he's, you know, it's, uh, he's going to train with us today. And the words out of his mouth and the way he's, his, his eyes and his smile, this guy, the first time I met him and every time I've seen him since, and every time I've watched him engage other people ever since, man, he just wants to make people feel good. Like, yeah. Josh, my man, give me a big hug. And that was, that was my introduction to Hensel Gracie. Not bow and call me sensei, and this, which I don't have a problem with that stuff, by the way. It's fine. But what, what really sold me more than anything else on Hensel was his personality. His, and it's just, listen, dude, his jiu-jitsu is amazing. And at the time, we're like the best guy in the world at it. But that's not what was that impressive to me, man. I could learn jiu-jitsu from other people. It wouldn't be the same. Henso makes people feel awesome, which makes them want to keep going. And um, so for a long time, I tried to model myself after that. And, uh, and, and you know what, man? That's not a bad lead to follow. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to try to make people feel good as often as I can. What's wrong with that? That's amazing. So that's my introduction to Henzo. When I start going to the to you know up to the city, and now holy shit, man, the city's a whole other ball game. Like as tough and good, and uh, as the guys were in Middletown, man, just understand this: it, the best of anything's in big cities, you know. Like so, you, now you go to the city to his classes, and now there's more and more people, more highly talented people who are training every day. Back then, for us, man, I'd be lucky to get a Wednesday class in maybe a Sunday morning, not five days a week, six days a week with amazing, talented people, just a handful of guys because there wasn't a lot back then, but in the city there was. And so that was my introduction to Matt and Nick Sarah, Rodrigo Gracie, freaking amazing, funny dude, like awesome jiu-jitsu, Ricardo, and Sean Alvarez, He's awesome. all these guys. Everybody. And the thing, yeah. the thing is, <laughs> dude, think about this for a minute. What fucking sport? Can you be a fan of and go and fucking work with them? Go work with them and have them actually. Now, listen, it's not so much like that now. Like, it's it's too big now. It's too busy. Like, the fighters don't have time to fuck around. They're training with each other. The highest, highest, highest level guys seeking out the other highest, highest, highest level guys. They don't have time for anything else. It's so competitive. The skills. And, and so we came up, I came up in a time where, you know, I was the generation, I'm older than a lot of the guys, but I started after some of them, where I was the next generation behind John Danaher, Matt Sarah. In fact, it's crazy, because Matt and those guys taught, taught to John, and then, you know, John ends up becoming who he is. Amazing people coming out of the city, but at the time, dude, you go in there, I'm a white belt, and I'm getting to train with Henzo Gracie before fights in Japan for pride. Like, that's insane. I'm getting to roll. I got to roll with Hansel Gracie so many times. Yeah, put and it this way. The best just, example, you you dude, watch UFC 3 and it's always Gracie. However much longer later you're training with Hansel Gracie. Like, oh, my God, dude. And so it's like, motherfucker, like, I don't, man, you can't do that now. You can go get a, a membership to train in a gym that these guys train at. But if you're not on your way to where they're at, you're not really going to get to spend that. You'll get to spend time with them if they teach a class. But, dude, some white belt off the street's not going to get in there and get to train with these guys. It's just not happening. So mm-hmm. the, um, those, days, those days were precious. And I, I'm, I consider myself really, really lucky to have been able to do that. And, you know, I get, get to spend time with at the time. Dude, those guys went to Abu Dhabi and – Man, I want to say it took for, like they. I think they won almost every weight class in one year, man. It, it was it was absurd how good these guys. Or maybe they didn't win every class, but they they placed like top two or top three, all of them, man. Rodrigo did, Hanzo did, Ricardo did, Matt did. Um, you know, Matt's matches matches for that time were insane. He, he looked he looked phenomenal, you know. And, um, even though, honestly, to this day. I could still beat most people that are competing at a high level. He's just that good. I mean, the guy's insanely good. But um, but yeah, I got well, to you do also that. went to Japan. You went to Japan, with Enzo, for pride, didn't you? Dude, that's how cool he is, man. Like, yeah, I went to I went to Japan. 
on, man. And, and I think Chuck, back to my friend Big Chuck, I think my friend Big Chuck had a little something to do with it. Dude, that is the first – let me not speak out of turn. Hold on a second. Let me just think before I speak. That is – okay. That is the first and only time that I've ever traveled out of the United States, bro. Like, that's crazy, right? Like, I'm 44 years old. That's not, I haven't gone anywhere. Like, I've spent most of my life as an adult just – really trying to be better at jiu-jitsu like 100 percent into it the whole time which is probably counterproductive i would have to say like almost entire almost definitely counterproductive but um but i guess that's what i guess it's what i needed to get to you know where we are now now looking back i'm like dude i could have still been pretty good and not needed nine surgeries or excuse me seven surgeries nine epidurals sorry and gone on vacations and, and, and traveled more and stuff. So yeah, how about that? Let's think about that. At this point in life, the only time I've ever traveled out of the U.S. was with Henzo Gracie for Pride 9 or Pride 8. Pride 8? He fought Alex on Alexander Atsuka, the diet butcher. That was a great fight, man. It was so much fun. But, <laughs> Omar's, uh, in, Omar's on all his glory right now listening to this story. <laughs> sure. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah. And so now, you know, over there at that point in time, Hanzo Gracie's royalty, dude. I had people, it's, this is fucking nuts, dude. I had dudes come up to me on subways and shit asking me for autographs just because I was hanging out with them. I'm like, oh, well, sir, why not? Like, fuck it. <laughs> so I'm literally, I'm literally nobody, and people were asking for autographs just because who I was with. It's, it's nuts, man. I mean, I'm having breakfast, like, and I look over, and Mark Coleman's sitting there, and Kevin Randleman. I ran into Kevin, Kevin Randleman at some nightclub in the Punky, which is like, if you want to go to Japan and act like a fucking idiot and an animal and just do whatever, go to a pungi, and you can do that. <laughs> Nevertheless, I, I run into Kevin Randall in one of these spots. He's like, yo, man, you got big arms. I'm like, fuck, fucking Kevin Randall just said I had big arms. That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> and if you saw me now, I'd think I was old. Still to you, Kevin. Still to you. But, but, uh, but, dude, that was, these are experiences that, that um, you know, people can't even imagine getting to have. And, and uh, you know, Dude, I got to help Matt. Like, Matt, Matt's got amazing people around him. I got to help Matt train for, like, I want to say four or five of his last fights, man. Like, um, St. Pierre two, Chris Lytle, Matt Hughes, Frank Trigg. Um, man, I, the Matt know, like, Hughes fight that he won? <laughs> the, Matt, he had the Matt Hughes fight that he won. We'll leave Matt Hughes alone, man. Dude, did you see he's fucking walking around and shit now? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Dude, that's amazing. And that's, like, honestly, that's a champion. Like, dude, he's not supposed to be walking around right now, bro. He's not. And uh, and he's up and he's at it, man. So it's like, how do you not respect that dude? He's back up walking around already when he, sh- you know, most by most accounts, he just shouldn't be able to. Um, but, yeah, Matt did win that fight. I, I can say that with, um, with, with, with honesty. I believe that Matt won that fight. I honestly thought Matt won a few of the fights that didn't go his way, especially the one and um, I want to say it was in Newark. Uh, could have I, was it Dean Thomas fight? Or, I, I forget who it was, but they. Uh, the one they, where they, they switched they, the, the they, outcome in the back. They fucking overturned. I think that they the talk about that a lot on that show. What was Dude, it? Uh, you guys got to. But uh, <laughs> what are you going to do, man? Honestly, not. I don't think that Matt cares too much about that stuff. He got to be world champion. How many people get to be that? You know. Um, it was the biggest upset in UFC history. Yeah hands down because not one person Crazy, right? was giving him that fight. Not one person. I mean, he talks yeah, well, about it all I'll the tell, time on that show. You know what? I'll tell you what, there were some people who, who, who believed <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I, I mean, bet on it. <laughs> did you? I, I know some other people that did too. I, I'm not a betting man. Dude, I hate betting. I despise it. Like I have kind of a pessimistic attitude about things anyway. And, and it, it's not so much pessimistic. It's just, how do you argue with mathematics? You know, like, like, oh, I think I'm going to win. Well, dude, you can't argue with math, and most of the time, math's right. Hold on, dude. Am I powering down? I just got a little battery warning, but we're cool, boys. Um, so, uh, you yeah, know, you can't argue with math, and the math says most of the time, if you're betting, you're going to fucking lose. So I'd rather take yeah. the money I bet on shit, go, go buy a, a terrible tattoo. I'm just kidding. I actually have awesome tattoo artists. Um, <laughs> But uh, there's, there's a lot of things I could do with that money that, I, uh, that, that I'd rather do with it than just say, here, and then hope, you know? 
Yeah. We're in I've lockstep lost a there. Lot more. But unfortunately, I've, I've learned the hard way. I learned the hard way about everything, man, except for that for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that, it's been an amazing ride, man, you know, and, and um, getting to train with these guys has been something else. Like, you get a little bit something different from each one of them. Like, like with Matt, Matt is, like, the most real dude you could ever imagine meeting. Like, he calls bullshit on bullshit. He tells you if you think you've done well. He tells you if you think if he thinks you haven't. Like, and, um, and he's very, very good at, at spotting things. Like, you know, it's it's really cool, man. It, it's, I can't explain it so much. It, if you're around him, you just know. Um, he's a really good dude. And, like, too humble even to to a fault, I think. Like, his jiu-jitsu is so friggin' good. And, uh, you know, he just goes about like it's not a big deal, but but it's insane. And, and the guy is well, amazing. Well, you, you saw his coaching on that Ultimate Fighter season he was on, not – the one that yeah. he's coaching against Matt Hughes, the season four. And when yeah. he was coaching that whole team, it was – he uh, actually yeah. made Shoney Carter look amazing. Yeah, <laughs> right? And think about – all right, so let's think about that. Think, let's think about what a good guy he is. Like, dude, his fucking first fight in the UFC was with Shoney Carter. He was beating him. He got knocked out. You know, like, and it's like, fuck, that's not good. And fast forward, now he's on this comeback season where he's helping him. He helped him out, you know, like – that's the kind of person he is. He he fucking helps people if he can, and he does it with a good heart. He doesn't do it so he can go online later and say, hey, I did all these good things. Look at me. He doesn't talk about it. He just fucking does good things for people. You know, and, and he got play. rid of his social media, didn't he? He got rid of um, it. Yeah, he's, I, yeah, I don't know. I know he's still on Instagram, and he's Facebook a little bit, but as far as like Twitter and stuff, I got to be honest, Twitter is for famous people. Um, so I, I don't really use Twitter either anymore, man. Like I, I couldn't. Well, even no, he got he got rid of it because he got tired of people telling him that he looked fat. That's what he said. He got rid of it. <laughs> well, yeah. Who, I mean, who wants to get bullied on the internet? Not me. <laughs> so, it's funny, man. Yeah, he's, but yeah, he's no, very active like, on Instagram, but he, he doesn't like to answer yeah. messages, Josh. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, I'll tell you something, man. He's active on Instagram most of the time, if you look. It's about other people. It's not about himself. It's about uh-huh. it, it's about his students. It's about his teammates. It's about all of this other good, positive stuff that he's happy for other people being able to do. Like that, that's something that like think about this. Could you imagine being like a world champion and then you're not, and then you're not fighting, and being able to just say, yeah, man, that was a great time, and now I'm ready to do something different, and it's okay, and I'm happy, like. Not like, oh, what about me? What about, oh, just happy for other people to do well, you know? And it's like, man, that's what I want to do, man. I want to, I want to be happy for other people, you know? It's, it's the easiest way to be happy. If I, if I can just be happy for the person next to me who's doing well, man, then I get to be happy no matter what's going on for me. And it's an amazing thing. And that's one of the things I picked up from that, you know, like, in, in addition to a million other great things, like his guard passing is, is to me the best in the fucking world. Like, you know, um, and anybody that doesn't agree with it hasn't been stuck underneath this guy. This guy's amazing at it. But, um, you know, but just being a good person and, and, and being true to yourself, like, which is really important. Like Matt spots shit a mile away. I talked about it before. And I'd be like, man, like, you know, I'll call him up and be like, dude, blah, 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 blah. And he'll be like, man, just be yourself, dude. You know, don't worry about any of this other shit. Just be you and you're going to be fine. And it's like, oh, okay. It's it's okay to just be Josh? Fuck it. I'm going to just go be Josh. It's good enough. And sure enough, man, I just go be Josh for a while and everybody's happy with me. You know, it's you just it's simple little things like that that can really change your life. You know, just having those good people like that, strong people who – um can help you through bad times and stuff. So that's Matt's greatest gift is, is not even the fact that he is an amazing athlete who got to be a champion. It's the fact that he says, okay, now I have the ability to help so many other people because they value me because I was a champion. And not everybody does that. Not everybody is capable of that. You know, it's, 
how many people are capable of being ex- an extremely violent person who is able to go into a cage and dismember people and then and then go home and and then go help you know it's, it's these are special people you know and it's and luckily for me I figured out that I wanted to do jujitsu and as a result found myself in Hedzo's with with Matt and all these amazing people you know so so that's how it all started it's probably getting boring ask me something else. <laughs> no, it's not getting great. Omar, yeah, no, it's great. Omar is probably nah. like pleasuring himself with his headphones off it's right now because Tommy. we're talking about Whoa. nothing but jujitsu. Tommy's got to go <laughs> fucking that that route, of course. Yeah. I mean, but Josh, I gotta tell you this, man, and this is what? this is the gospel truth. Yeah, All those that? things that you said about Matt, you have. Yeah. The well, way you I mean, you I make people it, feel good. Trust me, because well, listen, I told I'll you this before. Time. You ha- you haven't been around me for the past few years. I've been pretty bad. Like, you know, like I've been yeah, I've something... been working. But you don't understand what you <laughs> I... did for you don't understand what you did for me. Well, when I started I coming to your school you tell me? seven years ago, <laughs> yeah, seven yeah. years ago, when I first walked through your doors, I yeah. couldn't get any schools to call me back because I was stupid enough to tell them about the problems that I had with my legs beforehand. Nobody would oh, call really? me back. Nobody gave a Are shit. You serious? Oh, yeah, right. you not only called me back, you didn't give a shit because I asked you, is this going to be a problem? I don't care. <laughs> Does it hurt when you right, do this? Right, right. No. So I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I don't give a shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying. To... I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's funny. Listen, boys, I got to tell you, I've been working really, really hard at the school to not have a, 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 a cocky duty now like I'm having right now. And uh, it, it actually is a lot of fun to just be able to be on here and talk, like, almost as bad as I normally would want to. Not quite as bad, but pretty bad. I can say bad words on here like shit and not <laughs> feel like I just made a huge mistake. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, we were yeah. in the be- – we've toned it down in the beginning. So and I'll say I was pretty bad. Like when you were talking about <laughs> Matt Hughes, I might have made – a couple yeah, no. jokes. I was actually going to say, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, because, man, like, <laughs> honestly, dude, I've, I'll uh, say this. Tommy you know, is a very loyal, loyal subject. Yeah. He, I, he's, I know. Probably still know doesn't like Matt Hughes just because of, like, old rivalries with fighters he likes. <laughs> I eat Matt, Sarah. That's funny, man. Dude, that's funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm home team. They, they say it to me all the time. Anytime when we do our fight predictions, if it's uh-huh. a, Hicard- or a Hicardo guy, Anyway, Sarah guy, they like, already you know, you know where I'm this. picking. It's not even, yeah, it's not even yeah, worth no, it's me like, picking. Dude, you know what's <laughs> funny? When I, like, I stopped, I, st- I made the mistake of, like, doing picks for the St. Pierre Sarah fight with, like, students for that year. And, like, it was, like, just for the whole card and stuff, and we're doing picks. And, dude, like, I didn't have a ton of students at the time. I only had a handful. But, like... One of them, only one of them, but one of them actually had the fucking balls to pick St. Pierre. I'm like, dude, did you just pick St. Pierre? He's like, well, yeah. He's like, I just, you know, I don't think Matt's going to win the fight. I'm like, but dude, you, are you fucking serious? Like, I, I, I was like, wait, am I, now I'm like, I was confused. And I was like, man, is, is this something I should fucking kick him out over like I don't even know like and, and so, so like honestly luckily, luckily luckily he decided to leave on his own later anyway uh he thought the grass would be greener elsewhere and maybe for him it was but man I'll tell you what I lost a lot of people over the years there's a there's a handful in this the rest I don't miss them at all and it's like good go where go where you go and become what you want to be it's like man Paths can change, and uh, it, it's like, dude, go somewhere else, please. <laughs> it's, it's 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 okay with me, but uh, but yeah. So that fucking guy picked against our fucking. It's like, dude. So now I'm like, all right. Well, now fast forward. Now we're in a day and age where everything's on the freaking internet. I won't even ask those kind of fucking questions on the internet because I don't want to see the answers. Like, dude, if if somebody's on there who's my student and they're fucking talking out against any of my Sarah teammates, it's like, dude, get the fuck out of here, man. Like. <laughs> like, dude, you better no, be I, fucking picking, uh-huh. dude. I don't get, dude. I don't give a fuck. The only time I didn't want to see my guys picking a guy was if like two friends were fighting. Like, you know, we're pretty, pretty tight with uh, Anderson Franca, who's 
and really, really awesome guy. He's from Brazil. He's like the main striking coach for. We've talked uh, about him a lot. I, here. You know what? Yeah, I don't want to say the name because I don't want to. I won't say the name because I don't. I don't know if that's going to ruffle feathers or anything or anything. But but he's he's uh he was he's from Brazil and he's one of. Marlon Moraes is and uh, Edson Barbosa and Frankie Eggers and all these awesome dudes, uh, striking coach. And when he comes to town, sometimes he comes and he teaches at the school. And it's just an awesome dude. But anyway, Marlon's a fucking awesome dude. And Marlon was recently going to fight, you know, Aljo. Aljo, man. And so it's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm supposed to say about this because I'm not accustomed to it. I'm not used to just being able to be like, let's fucking go. And uh, so I just quietly bowed out of even talking about that fight. But but outside of that, man, always just it's just it's, it's just always got to be. Of course, Chris Weidman's going to win his next fight. Of course, Alec Clint is going to win his next fight. Of course, Al is going to win his next fight. Fuck you, mean like? Of course, Vol- Volante is going to win his. I think these guys, there's no doubt in my mind, they're going to win every fucking fight they go into. Just like Shammy's going to win every fight he goes into. And, and it's like so then you get students who are like, well. Fight fucking metrics, blah blah blah. Like, dude, you're fucking crazy. Root for your team, dude. <laughs> you know, like, so, uh, but anyway, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, no, nah, they, that they topic, make but... these guys make fun of me for being as home team as I am because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it could be it could be Chris Weidman against the Terminator. I'm picking Chris mm-hmm. Weidman. <laughs> <laughs> Weidman's winning that fight, dude. You know what? Oh, I got a funny story, man. So between. Let's say epidurals four and five for my neck. I was training a lot with Chris. This is when he first came to, to out to Matt's and Matt's old Huntington school with the gray mats and the half cage. Fucking good old days. It was fun, man. But uh, you know, Chris is coming in and he hadn't even been there maybe six months, a year, and he's just fucking us all up. And uh when I say that I I the the guys that I was training with him with, you know, like I'm, I'm that's who I'm speaking of. And and, and that's what was happening. <laughs> and, and it's frustrating. You know, but it's, it's like, look, man, I will show you whatever I can show you. I, I know where we're going, and I want to help you, and I will, I will help you as much as I possibly can with my abilities. And uh, so I always want to show him stuff. And help. He's a nice guy. And fuck, man, I can't go be a UFC champion, but why can't I help somebody else do it, you know? So I, uh, so I always love that guy. But long story short, you know, I start talking about him at home to people, I'm like, you know, like, this kid's amazing, I'm telling you, this guy's going to be the next champ, this is going to be the dude to take out Anderson Silva, and, you know, it's it's easy to look back now and be like, oh, okay, yeah, you need him, but at the time, nobody thought anybody was going to beat Anderson Silva, just like, you know, anytime somebody's that good and they're not losing, no one thinks anybody can beat them until they beat them, you know, and, yeah. and uh, so I, I went into the pizzeria up the street from my place, and, um, you know, I don't remember. I think you were working in there. And he was uh, one of Kurt's guys, one of Pellegrino's, one of his students, whatever. And uh, easy. You might get the buzzer, Josh. I know you're new here. Oh, there are certain names me. that we mentioned on this show. They get buzzed. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's all right. <laughs> if you need to buzz me, go ahead. So, um, so <laughs> I like anyway, response. So I, <laughs> I've always been the kind of person that just wants to be friendly with people. Like, I don't need to have this thing where I'm better than you or you're better than me and constantly fighting with all these fucking people. It's like, that's not what I want to do at all. Um, so I just start talking to him about fights a little bit. I'm like, dude, you see my boy, Chris Weidman. He's, 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 and this is, this was his statement to me. He's all right. His striking is quite rudimentary. I'm like, all right, dude. I'm like, Oh, okay, man. Well, nice talking to you. And fast forward, probably well, not even six months to a year. And now he's the champion who knocked out Anderson Silva. And I'm just thinking about, I'm like, dude, just how ignorant is that? Like, and I, and I always remember that guy saying that. And it was like, just a shitty way to behave. You know, Tommy, like, does it sound like anybody I'm, you know at the time? I was I'm, talking the same shit to Tommy. I was probably saying, I was probably the same guy. <laughs> like, oh, he's no way he can strike with him. <laughs> I shut up real quick. Yeah. It's no, until, it. and it's, until that fight got <laughs> announced. When that fight got announced, you switched your story. You said that you thought why there was actually going to beat him. Yeah. Well, I remember that. Listen, you never know. You know, you never know what's going to happen. But I just, dude, I've been on the mat with some amazing people, man. I'm, you know, look, I, I've always been pretty humble, and, and I've never been the most talented guy in the world. 
I know my shit now. Like, I'm good at fucking jujitsu, bro. Like, I know it very well. The things that I know, I know very, very well. I'm like, don't ask me to do a Baron Bolo. I still don't know how to do that shit. Not that I don't think it's cool or it would be fun. It's just never made it to the top of my priority list. I know when somebody's fucking good at this. I know when somebody's got extra shit. And so it's like, I wasn't surprised when he won. I wasn't surprised when Matt won the fight with St. Pierre. I'm not surprised about those things at all. The rest of the world might be surprised by it, but it doesn't surprise me one bit, you know, because I know what these fucking guys are. And, uh, you know, like, I don't know if you guys know this, like, I spent a lot of time driving up there and sparring and shit, even though I wasn't ever going to be fighting. Like, I've, I've sparred, I, I, I don't know if it was the wisest of decisions because I was undersized and old, but, I mean, I sparred with Costas, I sparred with Drago, I sparred, I sparred with a lot of these guys, man. And, you know, you just know who the fucking man is when you deal with these people. And uh, if you haven't dealt with the man, then... Yeah, you don't know what it's like to do with the man. <laughs> so then it's just that simple, you know? Um, but, yeah, it's just amazing shit. Like, think about that. And, like, how many times I've I've gotten to teach just because of Matt. Like, I go up there on a Tuesday night, and he turns over the advanced class to me. Like, Weidman's in there. Delonte's in there. All these guys, these, these the amazing athletes are in there um, and value the information I have to share with them that they can then go use to do great things with. You know, like I acquaint with these guys. I, I love being able to simply say like, okay, I, I get to go back and help Matt help these people. And it feels amazing because Matt helped me, you know, uh, for years I went and taught at Henzo's in, in um, Homedale, you know, like I, I had a regular spot there. And again, I wanted to go back and help Henzo because Henzo helped me. And it's like, now, we're fast forward, I have this school, it's, it's a pretty good-sized school, I have a lot of students, and up until recently, I didn't understand that just having awesome jiu-jitsu wasn't good enough, like, it's just not. You have to be ever consistently trying to give the best service you can to everybody, in the room. not just people who want to be, like, amazing competitors, but everybody, and, like, once I really understood that the pressure that I felt to be better at jiu-jitsu because all these people around me around here consistently trying to knock me down as far as like whether I'm good or not um like I do I would get phantom emails and shit from people like how can you look in the mirror you don't even compete like motherfucker I did compete and I didn't like it and I stopped and, and by the way I did win sometimes you know it's not like I didn't didn't do anything I'd just chosen to to take it in this other direction. And for a long time, I let those people irritate me to the point where they just drove me to prove them wrong. You know, like, okay, keep talking shit. Keep opening schools all around me and talk and talk and talk. And I'm going to continue to just work my ass off. And so it's like, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Because they fueled me just as much as I fueled myself or Matt and Henzo helped fuel me to try to be the best I could be. And they all helped me. I'm, I'm grateful for every last one of them. Every single one of them has done something to help me to become a far, far better person and a, a, a far better teacher than I ever could have been if they would have just left me alone. So it's like, Thank you guys. I really, really appreciate your help, man. I, I'm I'm on my way to an amazing place. I couldn't be there without them. I I had to feel that for all those years to get where I'm going. So it's like, man, I don't even have any hard feelings towards any of these people. I, literally, the things I'm doing now are so good. I will be happy to tell them how to do what I'm doing because their life will be better. <laughs> it's a, it's 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 an amazing thing. Well, speaking of amazing things, yeah. we have uh I know we have Matt coming to uh coming to Madama Jiu Jitsu uh in February. So let, let's talk about that for a little bit for the amazing cause that right. is coming to yeah, the school so, for. Sure. So first off, obviously Matt's awesome. And uh on on March no, that's the fight, Jesus. February eighteenth, it's coming up really quick. February eighteenth, Matt's coming down. Uh he's gonna do a workshop. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be sharing some of his uh, recent Kimura developments, which 
Uh, they're they're pretty phenomenal, man. These things, it's it's all so solid. Like he's Kamoring everybody right now. And he's going to share this stuff with us. Um, Kamora Savage. And, oh my God, dude! You don't even know, man. I don't get Kamora, bro. Like I give people Kamoras just to counter them. <laughs> and uh, and the last time I rolled with Matt was I can't even believe so far back now it was dude I had three surgeries in two years bro did you know that yeah every time I yeah. talk to you on online dude. you're like yeah I'm having another surgery like damn dude yeah uh, dude I thought yeah, I got cut I'm either a lot. I'm either I'm either broken on my way to surgery or I'm out of surgery on my way back to being healthy and then as soon as I'm sort of healthy I break something else and it, it is what it is but long story short, it's probably been a year already. And um, but at the time, I was healthy, so there's no excuses for shit. And he, he beat the shit out of me, man. Like, I, it was just as bad. And by the way, I feel very, very good about my technique now. Like, like very good. I'm very confident in it. Like, and, um, and when I'm in shape, I'm a problem for most people. And it was a joke. <laughs> it was just as bad as it was. Well, Five yeah, but he ago, was telling years ago. he was telling a story. <laughs> he was telling a story on UFC Unfiltered. He's like, "Yeah, I got my guy Jedi Josh. He comes down from Tom's River. He was attacking my legs. I was attacking his shoulders. Yeah. We were fucking each other up." <laughs> yeah, I can tell you I mean, that there's amazing. an embellishment He's there. He's talking about you. Yeah, on bro, UFC was... Unfiltered. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he was being nice. <laughs> I don't remember too many leg locks. I remember being Kamara. <laughs> In fact, when I say I don't remember too many. I can tell you, Tom, I don't remember getting close to finishing anything. I just remember being Kamord. That's what I remember. So it's, he was nice saying that, but but don't let him fool you, man. He he beat me up. <laughs> um, anyway, so he's going to share some of that, that amazing stuff. And, you know, the guy's worth a lot of money, and, and, and his time is worth money. And, you know, when he says to me, dude, I'm going to come down. I want to just come come do whatever. And I'm like, dude, I don't expect you to, to take time out of your schedule. I don't ever really bother him. But when I call Matt, it's usually because I'm in a really bad place and I need a pep, <laughs> you know. And uh, and he just happened to offer to do it at a time where literally like a day later from him saying, hey, I want to come down, uh, one of my students' moms who is active with this uh, pet rescue, um, you know, came to me and was like, hey, you know, like I saw you do the food drive for you know for for thanksgiving and that was nice and it's like have, you know would you think about doing something for the the, the pet rescue i'm like well what, what do you guys need it's like well, we need mostly medical stuff you know like there's it's expensive and they, they need food and they need this much. so i'm like all right well shit man i'll I'm like let me see what i can come up with and you know i got the idea to ask matt about it but i didn't tell her and i, and I told him i was like look man you know you're offering to come down and I appreciate it. Why don't we do something good with it? Like he's a big name and he's awesome. And it's like, okay, we're going to make it into a a fundraiser to help the clinic to take care of these animals, you know, and give them a chance to actually become useful members of families someplace, you know? And, and uh, so it's, it's awesome. He's going to come down, he's going to do the workshop. It's, and it literally like, you know, Matt warrants high fees, he really does. Like, it, like, like in in past, it's you know, a hundred dollars per person or whatever. And and, and in, at other times, like, man, the guy deserves quite a bit. And so, a modest thirty dollar donation to Save Rescue is a, it's a steal. Like, if you want to come to the place and chill with Matt, learn Kamoras and other things, and do a good thing, then I would love to see you, you at the school for that event. In fact, like. Man, I'm always willing to have people from other schools stop in. And I'm always willing to let my students go to other schools, too. Like, I don't have – there's always these walls, these barriers with these other guys. Like, I don't have a problem with other schools, you know. So people that want to come from those schools, come. You know, come hang out. It's a good time. You do a good thing. You learn good stuff from an amazing person. And, you know, then you go back to your own school. I'm not a, a student stealer, right? I'm creating my own market. I don't need to do that stuff. I don't like it. I've, I've, I've never liked it when people did it to me. And um, so there's, there's nobody has to worry about that. You don't want that. to charge anybody a, a dollar less to to come to Madama where they're from, like some other schools do. Oh, <laughs> right, Chris? Oh, 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 no. hey, there, bro. oh honestly, bro, I knew he was going to go there. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's all good, man. Honestly, like I, 
you get to a point and you're tired of fighting. You know, like you, you, you're tired of a hard life. Like my life's been hard. Like outside looking in, it's like, oh, this guy's got this school and he drives a cool car and blah, blah, blah. Dude, I've had a hard life and it, and it's, and I've endured quite a bit of pain. Like just physically, let's four shoulder surgeries, knee surgery, neck surgery, back surgery, nine epidurals. I need another knee surgery. I need wrist surgery. And, um, I fell coming up my steps about a month after my shoulder surgery and I'm fairly certain I detached one of the four heads of the rotator that he reattached and I'll probably need to have that done again. So just from a physical standpoint, I've spent most of my adult life in physical, like chronic physical pain. And like that adds up takes a toll man it takes a toll on your adrenals it takes a toll on your epinephrine your dopamine it, it takes a toll on everything and you compound that with like you know the other struggles of life that people have and, and you realize like oh my god man i'm 44 years old and i have lived the hardest life i could have figured out how to live on purpose it's like who would do that on purpose like why and so it's like okay now i'm at this point where I'm tired, I'm beat up, I, uh, you know, I'm burnt out. And what do you do? Like, what's left to do, Tom? Like, Omar, you tell me, what do you do? You better change. You know, you better exactly. change. You better change. You got you you to change it up. Yeah. You better change how you see the world. And you, and you better change your course of action because, dude, what am I going to do? I'm going to be a 50-year-old tough guy with a broken body? 60-year-old tough guy with a broken body? Like, where do where, like, where the fuck does it end? You know, like, I choose now, like, with a good heart and good intent, I'm free, bro. I'm free of anger against these people. I'm free of fear. I get to move forward with clarity of purpose and confidence that I can make it no matter what happens because I know what my job is. And it's just so simple. It's like, man, all of a sudden, I'm not mad at anybody. I want them all to do well, like, man, why do I need other people to fail so I can be successful, even if I don't like them? You know, they got bills to pay. They have kids. They have, they have parents. We don't know what other people's problems are, you know, and it's like, all right, I could sit around and be mad. I'm like, oh, why did they do that? I wouldn't do that to them. Well, I wouldn't, but that doesn't mean they owe me jack shit. They don't owe me anything. It's a free country. Everybody's got to feed themselves, and the last thing I would want to do, Tom, uh, Omar is to be successful purely because other people fail. That sucks. I don't want to be successful because people fail. I want to be successful because I deserve to be, you know, and, and dude, there's 60,000 fucking people in Tom's river, man. Like, do I need all of them? No, I need a few hundred good quality people. And the reality is like, I don't prov- like once you realize who it is that you want to want to serve, then you realize like, man, it's okay for people to go to these other places because the people who value me for who I really am and for what I'm really trying to become and trying to do, they're going to come to me and there's going to be so many people who will just not want what I'm doing, you know, like, and that's okay. There's enough people who want to be with me where I don't care, man. Like, all right, George Sullivan opened the next pause over. I was mad for a day. For a day, yeah. then I was like, oh, dude, he did me a favor because he's giving me something to be different than, and there's plenty of people that will benefit from going to train there, and there are plenty of people who will benefit from coming to me. And so it's like, I don't care. Do what you want to do because, again, I don't want to be successful because there's no competition. And I don't want to be successful because somebody else fails. I want to be successful because I deserve to be, because I put the work in, and I treat people the way they want to be treated, you know. And uh, it's a really, really good direction to go in, man. Simply just wanting to be a better person is an amazing thing, you know. Well, you're definitely doing it, man. And we're so glad you finally came on here to take the time to come on here with us. We got to do this again, man. We got to I'll do. do I'll come back. Uh, we'll talk about some more fun shit next time, and I'll curse more and maybe tell bad jokes. <laughs> well, so <laughs> you know? February eighteenth, right? That's when Matt's coming. Dude, 
Yes, February 18th, Madama Jiu-Jitsu Academy, Fisher Boulevard, Tom's River. It's at Bellcrest Plaza. Um, $30 donation gets you entry. And listen, if you want to come and just hang out, I'm okay with that too, but you're still paying the, the fee because we're trying to raise money for a good cause. Like, literally, there's, there are no cops on this one. I'm paying for it. Like, it's a good thing to do. And so if you want to come by and just chill out, whatever, that's fine, but bring a donation. And, uh, oh, no, no, no. I, make... will, I will be there. I have a gift yeah. for Matt. Oh, I don't mean you, Tom. I have a gift yeah, for Tom, you. Tom, I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want you to come. No, I'm not talking to you. You can't go. I'm talking to the listeners. I'm, I'm talking to your <laughs> six listeners, Tom. There you go. Now I'm going to start. Let's start ripping each other in the ass now. I'm talking to the six people that listen to your podcast. You're not coming. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, we picked up. Used to be three. I'm happy with that. That's good. That's, That's right. fucking awesome. Oh, um, yeah, cool. so yeah. seriously, man. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. So uh, yeah, man. But yeah, dude, I, I have I have something for you. I have something for okay. Matt. I want to talk to Matt. Get him on here because we were trying to get Matt or Henzo on here for our one year anniversary. Good and, luck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Eddie. Um, Eddie Gordon. We love him to death. He's been on the show a Eddie. few times. I talk to Eddie every couple of days. We'll, we'll text message each other back and forth. He was like, yeah, yeah, I talked to Matt. I just got to give him your uh, your information. And then Eddie started doing all the stuff with his book. <laughs> yeah, dude, Eddie's, Eddie's fucking working, man, right? Like, he's a fucking super positive. I don't know if you, I don't know if you bought it. He's a fucking positive dude. I don't know. I'm going to get his book because he's my friend and I love him. And, uh, and he's a super fucking positive dude. Like, no matter what, I've never seen that guy come off as being anything but happy. And uh, you know what, man? Like, if you, his life can't be easy all the time. None of these guys' lives can be easy all the time. But he, he consistently does what he can to make it a better place. You know, and it's like, man, all right. I'm proud of Eddie. I think he's doing good things. Yeah, he's, he comes on here a lot. He actually messaged me, uh, like, a week or so ago trying to set something up to uh, – to come on again because he, you know, we have fun every time he's on because we don't just talk about fighting, we talk about the right. finance side of fighting and things like that. We we get oh, pretty geez. in depth when he's on. Really, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I know I told you earlier that I don't listen to podcasts that much. I'm going to try to listen to more of them. You know, I, I tend to. It's really weird though. Like I tend to listen to the same music I listened to when I was 14 years old. So do I. When I drive, don't feel bad. To so and do from I. Work or whatever. And uh, and then when I get home, I don't, dude. I'm tired. I'm doing, I'm putting in 16 hour days. I'm doing whatever it takes to make sure that I deserve to keep doing what I get what I get to do. And when I get home, dude, I'm, I'm just like I'm done, man. I'm, I want to play Madden, which I suck at, by the way. Do you guys play Madden? <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to. No, yeah, but not anymore. No, no. But Honestly, I was man, never good. Oh my- <laughs> All right, so listen, one of my biggest goals in life now, aside from trying to be a better person and help people, is is simply just to beat my scumbag son at Madden, right? So I've been putting <laughs> hours. I've been putting in hours and hours. I know. I and, mean, you know, if somebody listening to that right now is like, oh, my God, how can he say that? Just no. relax. My, my, I love my son and I love my daughter. We've said worse, Josh. Above. Trust me. But, oh, trust but me. You're, you're light. Trust if me. We've said you, worse. You fucking... You fucking practice for weeks and play your 16 year old child and have them beat you fucking 65 to six, oh and not be mad at them. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. Oh uh, man. Do it. So that, anyway, yeah. that, For some reason, that's what I find fun to do with my five minutes of free time um, is to get my ass beat at home too, um, not just in the real world all day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Josh, man, I'm so glad you finally took you finally were able to get on here. We're definitely going to have you on again because we want to have a, uh, a just a whole show on uh, combat jujitsu and like EBI tournament oh. stuff. And you yeah, you were the first person EBI. that we wanted. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, I love See? EBI um, because uh, look, man, there's no perfect format, but. Like, dude, I spent a lot of time... Dude, I'm going to keep you guys on here. Holy shit. I spent a lot of time learning from John Danaher how to understand jiu-jitsu better. Um, and, uh, what I, one of, and, and listen, 
it's, it's just one person, you know, again, like, I get amazing things from Henzo and Matt and, and even guys in my own room now. Holy shit, man, these guys are amazing. But, uh, but long story short, one of the things I start to realize is the value of triangles for control and arm locks for control and how to hold the back longer and control. And so, to me, the EBI, like, the overtime portion of it is fascinating to me because these are the areas that, as my body's deteriorating, I am counting on more and more to re- to remain, like, competent against higher-level guys. Like, And so I love EBI. Let's talk about that sometime because th- those are things I'm fucking good at, actually. I really love those positions. Well, good. We're going to set something up, actually, pretty soon, probably closer towards the next EBI. So... All right, I mean, cool. I'm going to see you before oh, then. I, I'll see you on February can 18th. My, can I plug my own shit here? Is that corny? No, I'm that's just, I'm, what you're I'm here for. I'm trying to get, like, look, man, like, I'm trying to um, do more with Instagram. I feel like Facebook's kind of dying. Am I wrong, or is that just me because I'm old? No, you're, uh, you're, you're absolutely, you're correct. No, he is. Okay. Uh, I mean, so, it's, it's good for right, a little good. bit, but he's right. Yeah, all right. So then let's let's push my, my Instagram uh, and uh you can find us at Madama Jiu Jitsu Academy on Instagram. Uh, there's sometimes I put up technique stuff. Most of what I put up now is about my students and my other teachers, but every now and then I'll throw up some technique. I threw up some really cool shit recently, and so people should check that out. Awesome. All right. Well, Josh, we want to thank you again. Everybody, if you are <laughs> in the New Jersey or the New, the New York area, come down to Madama Jiu Jitsu on Fisher Boulevard, February 18th. $30 donation. Come and learn some shit from Matt Sarah. Josh, thank you again, and I will talk to you soon, brother. All right, boys. Have a really good night. Thank you so much. No thank problem. You, thank you. Right. Talk to you soon, guys. Stop in sometime. Later. Thank you. We will. Right, bye-bye. I don't even care that we went over, Omar. Like, matter. people got extra innings here. That was needed, right? Holy shit. It was just fucking tremendous, man. Just hearing the stories of, like, the old school... You know, nobody nobody understands how different the jiu-jitsu landscape is. It's, it didn't always used to be, like, this nice and inviting. And like, it, people don't understand that. They really don't get that. And then now, like, when new people sign up and whatnot, right, and then you kind of give them a little bit of that old school, like, not being dicks to them, but, like, oh, you want to go train somewhere else and you already train here, but it's, like, kind of a rival school. What the fuck are you doing? You give that sort of energy to anybody, you know this, Tommy. Like, sometimes you get like, oh, why, why are you being like that? Because you're an asshole, you know. And it, like, like I like that it was somebody other than us, like with you know, obviously more cred in jujitsu that was able to say, hey, listen, back in the day, you walked onto a mat, it was fucking Mortal Kombat. Even even if you were just like new, I remember having that happen to me back in in fucking what like 2002, 2003. You know, walking in, being like, "Oh shit," you know, it's not like it. It's not like it is now, and it's it's infinitely better because it gets to more people, right? And more people is better, but uh, it used to be the wild west a little bit, a little bit more back in the day. Even I was intimidated when I walked into right? the Dama in 2010. Like, yeah. I, I'll never forget. Tara came in with me, and I was just watching, and she's like, "What's the matter?" I'm like, "I'm gonna die." No, yeah, and it was like it was like random places. I remember a couple of the places that I I I walked into, you know, this is before Google Maps. MapQuest was still shitty as shit at the time, right? So like I'm walking into these places. There's no signs on the side of the the buildings. There's no like you know, oh come in. It's not really well lit. Some of these places I remember, and I was like, yo, I might actually die, right? I might get shanked because these are like you know old abandoned warehouses that they just put mats down on. <laughs> And and sign month to month leases and shit. And then when you get on the mat, you're like, I want to learn from you guys, but everybody's there like, yo, okay, we're gonna fold this guy up like laundry, you know? And it's like, well, fuck. And that's how you learn. If that's you, if you kept coming back, then you eventually were not an asshole and you were part of the team. And then and then you eventually were were you know welcomed in a little bit more. But a lot of it was like, hey, let's see if this guy lasts. You know, because I feel like there was more of a a, a a a thought of like we're we're practicing, you know, like fucking the dark art. Is this guy you know gonna I mean? be worth it? Yes. Is, is it like do we want to give him these secrets 
Do we want to spend time on them? You know, and it's and people don't realize that. For the longest time, everybody thought, hey, man, if I come in with that flying sidekick like Bruce Lee, I'll fuck everybody up. Remember, like, you know, UFC 3 was my big thing, too. You know, everybody thought. And, and, and he was absolutely right. A ton of folks thought, because of the way that Hoist looked, hey, or, you know, versus versus Shamrock. They're like, oh, Shamrock's going to eat him. You know, and I was like, well, skinny guy in pajamas, man. Change the face of fighting forever. I was so excited when he said that he wanted to come on, just from the lineage factor. That's what we needed on here. And we just scratched, we just barely scratched, because, like, he, you could tell there was a ton of, like, different tangents he could have gone on, because it's just one of those, you know what this reminded me of, and you've you've lived this, right, is, uh, fucking, you walk on, like, after, like, a hard seminar or whatever, and guys are just chilling on the mat, and just swapping stories, or you go, like, to grab a slice of pizza or something after a good seminar, right, the guy stays local, whoever's coming into town, and you're just, you know, starstruck to, to meet the guy. And he's just giving, he's just dropping knowledge about the, the, the way things used to be. It's fucking crazy, man. Now, people need to remember that, you know? Fuck yeah. Oh, Dude. my God. I wish that didn't have to end, man. I really no. do. We need to get on another format where people could just listen to that entire thing live for however the hell long it was because we could have went forever. But we unfortunately... Did. Chris had to step off because there's a lot of sickness going around in his house. Chris, I hope everything is okay. Um, yeah. Walmart. God, I was worried about this show because there wasn't a lot of news going around. And Josh yeah, definitely saved the day. <laughs> he came in clutch. He came in mad clutch. Yes. And I'm excited to have him back on when we can talk EBI again. Because when you get Hell this yeah. guy down a rabbit hole at jiu-jitsu just because of everybody that he's learned from, yeah. oh, boy. Yeah, it's like an encyclopedia. Oh, boy. You could tell. You could tell. Yes. That it, like I said, it was just like the surface. You just barely scratched the surface. And, you know, when – and and you and I both fully realized, like, when, when he was mentioning it, when somebody comes back, like, from, you know, being out and about, uh, like like Matt Sarah, and he comes back and he goes, yeah, I've uh, I've got some new stuff on the Kimura. Kimura is one of the first moves I learned. It's probably one of the first moves you learned, right? Yet it's how many years later, and people are still coming back, you know, from being out 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 in the wild and saying, you know what, I've been working on some new some new wizardry. Like that's crazy. Jujitsu is amazing, right? Like it just it always always uh, evolving, you know, and and. And the three of us, Josh included, we're all like, oh, shit. Matt Sarah's coming out with some new shit for Kimura's? Like, we're going to sit down and listen. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, fuck, what the fuck? Yes. Oh, Christ. I'm very excited to finally be able Yo. to meet Matt. <laughs> Yo, legit. You're going to get those shirts. It's been, it's been a long time coming. So It's been a definite long up. time coming. It's going to be big. <clears throat> and I know Josh said, <clears throat> excuse me, Josh said Matt loves to promote himself. So I'm going to work my ass off to get the <laughs> former UFC welterweight champion, the last man to beat George St. Pierre on this show. If you're not listening to us now, you're going to miss out. You need to be listening to us. Because when that okay. show comes on, the floodgates are going to open, and Pride Rules is going to be on everybody's minds. Am I right or wrong, Omar? I I'm excited. I can't I can't wait, dude. If that if that comes to fruition, which I super super hope it does, it would oh, be no. like a bucket list sort of thing, bro. Like no, I'm not even kidding. You know, having him. I have I haven't met him. I haven't talked to him. You know, and I respect him. He's such an OG in the game. He's done so much for jujitsu as well as MMA. You know, he's been at the forefront of all the big major waves. You know, and and he's been a proponent and flying the flag for East Coast jujitsu. For the longest time, even when, you know, there was that time where, oh, yeah, West Coast is better, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's been holding it down for this entire coast when it comes to jiu-jitsu. So I'm, I'd be, I'd be honored right. to, to talk to the guy. I really would be. That might be one of those ones where we have to extend the live listen. Oh, dude, I, I would, I'd probably set it for like 17 hours and just be like, fuck it. Yes. 
I wouldn't care. Yes. If that ever, oh, Christ. All right, well, listen, uh, yeah. we're, we are going to wrap this up now. We went over. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. This was a long time coming for Josh Madama to come on here. Um, make sure if you're in the tri-state area and you want to come learn some Camoras from Matt Sarah, February 18th <laughs> from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Come down, Madama Jiu-Jitsu, Fisher Boulevard. Make sure that you get there with your $30 donation. And uh, Omar, brother? I'll be talking to you soon. Excited for next week's show. We don't have a guest yet, but who really gives a shit? Because no matter yeah. what, we're going to bring you a great show. So for me, the Reverend Tommy D, <laughs> El Professor, Omar <laughs> Sangarima, and the happy casual who's not with us, we are Pride Rules Podcast. We will see you next Monday night. <laughs>